Hey friends, my name is Linda Dorkey. I'm a demonstrator with Stampin' Up! in Australia. And today I have something super cute to make with you. This is a cool little diorama card. It's actually way easier than you might think. It's super easy to do. So stick with me and I'll give you all the measurements and all the details how to put it together. While you're here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I go live here every Friday night and Sunday night, as well as little videos like this here and there as well. So there's lots to see. So please hit subscribe and let's get started on the card. So here we go. This is the card we're going to be making today. It's actually a really easy diorama card. So um, I tend to focus on more simple designs. That's just my thing. Um, but I think it turned out really, really pretty. I'm using a suite from our brand new catalogue today. Now this one is called Happy Forest Friends, and you'll find it on page 46 and 47 of the latest annual catalogue. You'll see there's some really nice samples here, different ideas you can do with it. It features this great little stamp set with the bear and the fox and the owl and all the other little pieces. And then we've also got some gorgeous, um, if you're buying the whole suite, there's also some old olives and Sahara sand ribbon which is fantastic. It's twill ribbon, really nice to use. I'm not using it today, but I really like it. Um, there's also dies that cut, cut out all of these uh, little animals and things. And you can buy these as a bundle if you want to, or you can buy the whole suite. And you can, of course, if you're buying a bundle or a suite, you save 10%. But if you don't want to, you can also just get the paper. Okay, so the paper is fantastic. And I'm just going to show that to you really quickly. This is the paper. It's called Happy Forest Friends, and I've already chopped up some of mine, as you can see. It's, it's really lovely. So this one is, we're using this one today. It's got the trees, and down the bottom, we've got like some little foliage down the bottom there. On the back, we have some little green leaves. This is Old Olive and Mossy Meadow. They're the greens in this. Okay, you can see this is one I've already chopped down. Then we've got some little tree stumps and twigs and things on the back. We've got some little crosses. We've got some little calypso coral mushrooms. And on the back, that's really pretty as well. Those two look really nice together, don't they? Don't they look good? Um, this is one of my favourite pieces, and we are using this piece today. I'm going to use a little bit of the mountains today because they're super cute, right? I mean, you have to use things that are super cute. And then on this one here, we've got like little, um, they look to me almost like little birdie footprints on the back of that one. And we've also got some little foxes and bears there running around with the owl and the little birdie. Looks really, really cute. All right, so these, um, there's 12 sheets in a pack. And like I said, they're called Happy Forest Friends. So I'm using them to give, um, some of the scene making. When you make a diorama card, you want to be thinking about creating a scene. And so I've used my bear and my fox and some mushrooms, and I've even added a little tree up here, um, but I'm using some of the DSP on the background. But let's start. First things first, we need to talk measurements, okay? Now in the past, I've actually done quite a lot of dioramas over the years. And in the past, I have made dioramas that have, they're more like a box. They fold flat and go in an envelope. But this section here, this little side panel was actually in the previous ones I've done was two inches wide. Yes, I did say inches. I'm using imperial measurements for the most part today. Um, so they were two inches wide. This one is only an inch wide. And I actually kind of, I kind of like it for this one. I didn't need it to be a box. It does still fold flat to put in an envelope. So you can put them in an envelope, but you need an envelope that's a little longer. Okay, it's still the same width as a normal card, but you need a longer envelope. In Australia, you would be looking for a DL envelope. Um, so I just really like the way this comes together. And of course, it looks fantastic to display. If you want to display it, like if you were giving it to someone, say, as a baby card, which you certainly could, it would look beautiful displayed with all their new baby things. So let's pop it to one side and work on the measurements. You're going to need a trimmer for this. I'm using my Stampin' Up! trimmer. Um, and I'm just going to sort of tell you here, on my original one, the one you just saw, I used uh, Mossy Meadow as my card base, okay, which is a dark green. You can use any color you like, but if you're using a dark color, you will probably need to add a white panel to the back so you've got somewhere to write a greeting if you wish to do that, okay? so. Um, if you're using a darker color, add a white panel on the black back, glue that on, and you can write on that. Okay, so that's just a little solution for where to write. Another option is to not use dark colors 
like I use the dark green for the front and only have the different color, a lighter color on the back. So you could have a white or um, today I'm actually going to use um, some Sahara sand for my backing piece. Okay, so all right, let's have a little look at what you want to do. I'm going to be measuring this. Now, normally, like I said, I'm using mostly inches today. Um, but what we want to do is we want to make our card the width so that you get two, we're going to be going lengthways. You want to get two out of one piece of cardstock to maximize your value, right? So my suggestion is if you're using metric, that you measure your A4 cardstock lengthways at the 10 and a half centimeter mark, okay? Because that gives you exactly two, that's exactly half, and it gives you two pieces of cardstock. And you're going to get two cards out of one. You, oh, sorry, you'll get one card because you need one for the front and one for the back. Okay. Um, if you're in the US, that would be at the five and a quarter inch mark. Okay. So measure lengthways at five and five and a quarter inches. Sorry, four and a quarter inches. What am I saying? Goodness me. Four and a quarter inches. So yeah, I'll have it up on the screen for you as well so you don't get lost. So four and a quarter is your halfway mark. Okay. Now, in the past... Um, I used a different measurement. If you want one that's more like a box and more wide to fit more things in the middle, okay, then um, follow the measurements of one of my other dioramas which have the two inch panels at the side. But today we're not doing that. Now this one, you can see the front of the box here is five and a half. This section from here to here, right there, is five and a half inches wide, okay? And then I've got a one inch panel down here and a one inch panel down here. So we need a seven and a half long inch piece to start. And I said I was gonna use Sahara sand on the back. You know what, I'm not. I'm just gonna go with one piece of cardstock because that's economical. And we're gonna go seven and a half here. All right, so then I've got two pieces that are identical. They're measured to fit um, so you just go with your standard measurement. If you're imperial, it's going to be four and a quarter. And here in Australia, or if you're using metric, it's going to be 10 and a half centimetres. Okay. And then this lengthways is going to be seven and a half inches. All right. I'm going back to inches and I'm going to stick with inches now. <laughs> I hope you're not too confused. I did put it, I'm putting it up on the screen for you. Oh, and we also have a middle piece. Okay. Now this piece is going to be a little shorter. So it's the same width again as this one. Okay but we're adding an inch to the measurement. So it's going to be six and a half, okay? The, these two pieces are seven and a half. This one is an inch shorter at six and a half. So I'm just going to... All right, so these are the three pieces that make up your diorama base, all right? One piece for the front, one piece for the back, and a piece for the center. Let me show you what I mean. So we've got one piece here for the front, one piece for the back, and a center piece. Can you see that okay? So the centerpiece is a little shorter. It's an inch shorter than the others. So when you hold it up, it's still the same width, but you can see it's an inch shorter here on the end. I hope, I hope that's clear enough, okay? Now we need to do a little bit of scoring, all right? So we're gonna bring our trimmer back in, all right? And make sure, if you're worried, if you're like me, and you're worried about um, possibly cutting instead of um, scoring accidentally, move your scoring, your cutting plate blade all to the bottom, all the way to the bottom. If you're even more um, paranoid about it, <laughs> and there's no shame in that, get rid of it all together. Take it out. That way we can't use it accidentally, right? <laughs> all right, so I'm going to start with my two front and back pieces, and I'm going to put this in at the one inch mark here, and I'm going to bring my scoring blade down, and I'm going to score it one inch from the end. Okay, I'm going to turn that around. And I'm going to go one inch from the end again. All right. So now we have a score mark here and a score mark here, one inch from each end. And we're going to do that to both pieces. They're going to be exactly the same. So one inch. And one inch. There we go. All right. So we've got those two scored. Just set them aside for a second. Now we have our Sahara sand piece, the six and a half inch piece we're going to measure this one we're going to score this one only at half an inch half an inch from this end turn it around and we're going to go half an inch from this end if you're using a scoring tool don't worry that's fine no, the measurements don't change everything's still the same so we now have three pieces 
our Sahara sand piece or whatever color you're coordinating color you're working with here is got a half inch score line at each end and then these two pieces have the one inch score line all right so so one is going to be your front and one is going to be your back it doesn't really matter this Sahara sand piece is the one in the middle let's go ahead and fold our score lines now I always think you get a, a box that sits better if you use your bone folder as you go all right so I'm just going to fold these both the same way and it's going to be the same with the other pieces every all the folds go the same way all right so just fold so they all come in and we're about to start decorating okay which is the fun part I think so this is probably the simplest type, type of di diorama I've seen anywhere. I think these are really easy. So you're going to have one piece that sits like this. You're going to have another piece that sits like this. So if this one facing towards me here is the front, that one's going to go sort of hug around that one there like that. All right. Now this piece goes in the middle. So this piece goes in the center and then this piece goes around and this is how it's going to look. How easy is this, right? So what we need to do now is decorate it and put our holes in, okay? So the easiest way to do this is our front piece. The easiest way to do this is to start with a piece of cardstock. And I'm going to grab a piece here, all right? So I'm using this piece here that's got the foliage down the bottom. And I'm going to use a bottom piece because I'm going to make use of that foliage. You can use a, the piece of the up the top if you prefer and stamp along the bottom because there's in the little stamp set there's you know little mushrooms and foliage and different bits and pieces so you could certainly do that but i'm actually going to make use of what's on the paper all right so let's i'm going to make this piece um actually I'll go this way. um i'm going to make this okay if you if you cut the ten and a half size before the 10 and a half centimeter size then this piece is going to be 10 centimeters wide so a little bit less wide than our piece so if you cut five and a quarter before we're going to put our cutting blade back in if you cut five and a quarter before you're going to be cutting five now so it's half either half a centimeter or quarter of an inch smaller than what we previously had okay and then i'm going to make this remember this piece is five and a half oh, let's go from here this piece here at the front is five and a half inches from here to here. So this from here to here is going to be five and a quarter. So let's put that in and we'll go five and a quarter. Five and a quarter inches. I know I'm jumping around a little bit between metric and imperial, but it's hopefully to help you guys get better use of your, um, your paper. Right. So this piece is going to go right here on the front. All right. Exactly like that. So I'm going to actually glue this in. You can use seal, you can use Tombow, you can use whatever adhesive is your jam. Um, I'm going to go and put this all the way around. Now, we are going to be putting circles in the middle of this. So I'm also going to come and do a big circle here so that it's not going to flap around there in the middle either. Okay, so just a nice big circle. And let's attach this straight to the base. Just center it, give it a good old push down if you're using Tombow or whatever you're using, you should give it a good old push down. All right, so that one's ready to do. All right, then we also have the center piece. It's going to have a hole cut out of it. Now the back is not. The back is going to have another piece at the back because um, we want to have a scene that we're looking into. So for example, can you see I've got some mountains and I've also got a little fox in here, but he's on the middle layer, but you can have him on the back layer if you want to. It doesn't really matter where you put him, but I've actually used a bit of the mountains for this bit. So um, there's a couple of bits of mountains. Let me actually, I'll grab the piece that I want to use. All right, so this is the piece and I used a piece from this side because this side's got the fox in it. If you didn't want to cut the um, fox out of the stamps, if you didn't want to stamp the fox like I did, can you see I've got my little fox here. If you don't want to have him, you could use the one that's on here and he could be in that in that little circle and you could have the fox in the background. One less thing to cut and stamp, but it's totally up to you. I kind of liked having the extra fox. All right, so let me grab my trimmer again. Now this is going to be the same, whoops, upside down. This is going to be the same width as before. 
so let me cut this this is going to be in my case i use centimeters to cut my card base so it's going to be 10 centimeters wide however those of you who had a four and a quarter now you're going to be using uh, four inches here. Right, so let's now I'm cutting this right from this this is a six a 12 by 12 piece so I'm cutting it at the six inch mark and then I can decide which bit do I want to have showing through the hole I'd like to have the mountains showing so I'm actually going to cut off this end so what did we say before five and a quarter is the front is the full size All right so it's going to be like that All right now we have this piece which we already know is going to be the front this piece is going to be the back so these pieces come up because that is the backing piece and I'm going to pop that right there in there so that when we put the hole in you're going to see some of those mountains okay so let's glue this in all right now just to save time I've done a little bit of the cutting already but I'm going to show you the bits that you need to do now we do actually have a set of dies called the layering diorama dies and you can use those if you wish to do this okay this would actually work quite well so the layering diorama dies are going to give you a different effect and this is what they look like I'll just quickly show them to you so this will give you a different look again um, but these ones give you like these are not regular shapes they're kind of that, that can be kind of fun for this kind of scene as well. So you can have like the shapes, you can kind of have them kind of lining up or you can have them not lining up at all. And they look, they will give you a really interesting look as well. But today I decided to just use circles. Um, circles are probably the simplest shape to work with. Um, and, you know, they lend themselves to a lot of different types. So for that, I use my Stylish Shapes dies. Now, Stylish Shapes are my favourite die set at the moment. Absolutely my favourite because, oops, they're, they're all falling out, because you have a whole bunch of really super useful shapes. There are five squares, here they are, five squares, four banners, and six circles, okay? And the circles are range, all of them are great sizes, I think, but the circles range from quite large to um, very small. So I'm actually using the two biggest ones today. So grab the two biggest ones out of your, of your circles dies. And we want both because um, we need one for the outside layer. Show you again. So your biggest layer is here on the outside and then the one on the inside there is the next size down so that you can just sort of see the edge of that one. Okay, so it's kind of cool. It's a, it's a real, like it's like, almost like you've got this little telescope vision into the background. All right, so what we need to do is we need to, first of all, let's get rid of our background for a second. This is our foreground. Okay, we are going to be positioning this right here in the middle so you've got the same amount here as you do here so just kind of eyeball that and you know even as long as you're pretty close to the middle that'll be fine and then that is going to cut through both layers the cardstock and the dsp okay so what i'm going to do i've got a smaller one we'll come back to that i'm going to run this through my machine and i'll be back in just a second okay so when I take that off, you can see it's cut through both layers and I can just push that out. And this is now like a super thick, almost like a, um, almost like a heavy cardboard. I'm trying to think of the right word, but I can't right now. I'll put it on the screen if I remember. Um, and the whole, you know, it's like an accent that you can add to another, another project, which is rather cute. All right. So that now has a hole in it, as you can see, and that's the front layer of our diorama pretty much made we just got to add a bit more decoration okay and when you look through it you can see it's really cute you could just have the two layers if you wanted to and have this which would be rather gorgeous but we want to have an extra layer because we're fancy like that so we're going to have this extra layer here okay which I've done in a coordinating color Sahara sand which is also one of the colors in this paper and we're going to be cutting a hole out of this now how do you make sure that the hole here ends up in the right place there and that's actually pretty easy what we do is we line these up so that your the two score lines are right up next to each other okay so it's lined up perfectly and then you put it through your machine so that this is centered in the middle of this circle all right once i've got that there i can actually take away that top layer 
and it's in the right spot. If you're worried about it, put a little bit of washi tape or post-it notes down to hold it in place. And then we're going to go off and fact, I might even do that. Just pop that down. And that's going to hold it in place so that we can put it through our machine and it won't move. So let's run that through. I'll be right back. Okay, so you can see we've cut out our circle. We'll keep that for another project. It's not going to be wasted. And we'll take this off. And we now have a hole here in the middle. Okay, which when you put these two together, you'll see it lines up perfectly. Okay, so that's just a little way of making sure that you get that nice and centered. Now, also, you might notice on my original that I used like a gold frame. Can you see my gold frame? And for this, I used our gold specialty paper. This paper is stunning. This is in our annual catalog as well. I love this stuff. It's not expensive, but it's so, it gives you, a, it's great for vintage looks. It's really, really great if you want something a little bit different than flat gold. I just think it adds a lot of character to projects. So I really, really like it. So I decided I was going to do that. And so to cut this out, you will put your big one that we just used on the front and the little one that we just used on the centerpiece, line them up. Once again, put down a piece of post-it note or a washi tape if you want to make sure they don't move anywhere and run that through your machine. And what that does is it gives you, by the magic of television, gives you this lovely little frame because these two, it cuts out in between. The in between, the piece in the middle, you'll end up with a couple of gold pieces or you'll end up with a gold piece um, each time you do this, but that's okay. All right, so let's attach this. I'm going to turn this little piece of gold over to the back. I'm going to use my Tombow multi-purpose glue and I'm just going to literally go all the way around just with a thin little bit of glue and then we're going to line that up on our small circle in the center piece there all right just push it down with your fingers and that'll give it a nice a nice little look this gold look is really lovely i think it's really beautiful all right we're almost ready to put this together not quite but almost whoops i didn't didn't wait for it to dry you need to give it a couple of minutes before you start working with it because it it may move around a little on your on you like mine just did so i should leave that to dry a minute in the meantime we're going to start thinking about our decorations okay so we've got a bear we've got a fox i've got a couple of mushrooms here and i've also got a little sentiment and you'll find these in the happy forest dyes so they're the match for these beautiful stamps let me just pull them out for you all right so you can see i've got the bear i'll take him out we've got the fox we've got what else do i have we have the little sentiment label and also the mushroom. <laughs> I think the mushroom is super cute. And the color of the mushroom in the paper is Calypso Coral. So I went with that as well when it came to, um, when it came to um, stamping. So I've got my fox. He's also in Calypso Coral. So let's start with the fox. Right, so let's pop him here. He used stamps really beautifully. These are actually a type of stamp called a distinctive stamp. If you haven't seen these before, they're pretty special. So that's why we have like light and dark coming through in the one stamp. They're beautifully made. I'm going to have a couple of mushrooms all in the same Calypso coral. All right. And then I want a bear. All right, here he is. I've got him on block E because he's a bit bigger than block D. And we're going to ink him up. And once again, he's a distinctive type of stamp. So he's going to give us that beautiful dark and light feel when we stamp him. See what I mean? Look, see his tummy's darker and his legs are darker. And you get a little bit of shadow around his neck and his other, his other arms. So I just love these stamps. I just think they're so, so beautiful the way they work. Um, the other one that I'm going to do is um, the welcome. Now, you don't have to have a welcome. That's this one right here. Um, in this set, you can, there's actually some nice greetings. It says, hello, baby, thanks, welcome. And a big one that says, happier than happy for you, which is where the stamp set gets its name. So I like all of them. Obviously, the happier than happy for you is not what I want to use. It's a bit big for this card, but it certainly would look, look lovely on another card with a bigger label. All right, so I'm going to stamp my, I'm going to, will I have welcome? 
maybe I did welcome last time. Maybe I'll do thanks this time. So let me just pull that off and grab my thanks instead. Pop that back in. Use the thanks. Pop that on. All right, and we're going to go with early espresso. Now, you don't have to do this, but my experience has been that it's easier to, especially when you're going onto a small label like this, it's easier to stamp first and then cut it out, okay? Um, sometimes when I'm running a class, I cut out all the tags in advance and get people to stamp on them, which is sometimes great and sometimes not so great because um, sometimes it's really hard to get your words really straight on a little label. So my general advice is stamp first, cut after, okay? All right, so we've got our pieces. We have our mushroom. We have our fox. We have our bear and we have our things. There we go, just like that. All right, so by the magic of television, I'm about to cut these out as if it were magic. Okay, how good is that? I'm so glad I don't have to sit there and fussy cut. I love, dyes are the best, they really are. Saves you so much time and trouble. We have our two mushrooms, we have a fox, we have our little thanks and we have the bear. All right, so now we can do the rest of our decorating. Okay, I'm wondering whether I'll put this together first. I think I might. So all you'll do now is you've, you've got this piece here, which is going to go into the bottom and show you this mush, uh, these um, mountains in the background. This piece is going to come up and then the other piece with the circle cut out of the front is going to go over the top and like hug it all the way around. All right, just like that. All right, so let's start by putting this piece in. Now you can use, my favorite thing to use for this is tape and I didn't realize until I went to make this card that I've run out. So um, I need to buy more. But seal is a pretty good way to go if you don't have any. Um, the other thing is you can use Tombow, but you'll have to make sure you hold it in place while it dries. Okay, now what I'm going to do here, I've got it on the outside little extra piece. Okay, so it's on this extra piece. I'm going to pop this right into the score line so that these two are going to sit just like this and then you push them together just like that. All right. So you can see how that's now sitting. So just this little piece is, and we're going to do the same thing here at the other end, just like, pop it down where that score line is, bring up this piece and push it down. Okay, so now you've got this piece glued in, okay, and these, the bottom piece, this piece, the piece that comes up, this side piece uh, is sticking up. I hope you can see that there. All right, now the top bit is going to go hug all the way around, okay? So what you need to do is make sure that you're putting your glue either on these pieces here or on the inside, okay? You don't put it on the outside because then you'll end up with glue on the outside and that's not what you want. So I'm actually going to glue mine. I'm going to hold this down flat. Um, if you want to use Tombow, the good thing about using Tombow is that you can wriggle it into place, but then you have to wait for it to dry. If you are too impatient, you can use seal or tape, but then if you don't get it in the right place on the first go, you might find, you might find yourself trying to get it undone. All right, so this one, this is going to go right here and line up with that edge. All right, so I've now adhere this piece to the outside can you see how it's sitting okay and then i'm trying not to go too fast in case people are crafting along with me um this piece you just do exactly the same thing this piece will fold over and then we have our pieces now you can see that my um centerpiece there wants to um pop up okay what I would suggest that you do is just push it from the inside. Just make sure that like I'm pushing it, pushing that down to flatten it. All right. But how easy is this? This is a really easy, easy peasy design. So it's kind of like a mini box, but it's actually a card. And you can see that you can see your lovely gold uh, frame inside there that you can easily see that. Now, 
Up to you where you want to put these. I put my fox so he was coming over the inside of my frame because I liked him popping his head up there. And you can put him, you can put adhere him flat or you can put him on dimensionals. It really doesn't matter. If you're going to adhere him flat, you just do the tail and the second half of him. Don't do his front legs or his face because that's the bit that's sticking out in the middle. So we're just going to have him just sticking down here. So we don't want glue behind this part of him okay because we don't want that to stick our card closed so now we've got our fox in how easy is that we've got two little mushrooms and we've got a bear so the bear's going to go kind of over the edge and he's sort of saying hi to somebody off there in the background um i did use dimensionals for him because i thought i thought that looked rather good but you can stick him on flat if you want to if you're going to use dimensionals i just put three dimensionals right down the middle of the bear okay so one, two, and three, just like that, All right? So when this is on, um, I also put one, just, I put an extra one just here. Oh, that one's not sticky. There we go, just there like that, All right? So his little bottom, his little tail there is gonna stick just, just off the edge of the card, which kind of looks really cute. Now you could use any scenery scene you like to make this card. The measurements would still be the same. Um, and I think it's I think it's really sweet. This is a nice set, but if you don't have this set, you can do it with lots and lots of other sets. Um, but anything, what you're looking for is scenery kind of stuff, stuff that you can make a scene with. And this paper lends itself to scenes so well. You've got the trees in the front, you've got the mountains in the back there. I think it's really cute. This little guy, I'm gonna use mini dimensionals for him. And I'm going to pop one here up near where the hole is and another one. I don't want to go too close to the end because that's going to pop over the edge there. So um, once again, don't go right out to here. In fact, that might want you a little bit too far. About halfway is good. All right. Um, you can stick this on and then tie a bit of twine if you want to. I've got some linen thread here. Or you can tie it before you stick it on. That's why I haven't taken the backs off yet. So I'm just going to put the middle, my linen thread through this, just pull it out and I'm just going to tie it. This particular linen thread roll, this is almost the end, look, but I do have another one. I never let myself run out of linen thread. It's one of those really super useful things. Just I find I tie better bows if I tie them upside down. I don't know why, it just does. You should try that. If you have trouble with bows, try tying them upside down and see if they sit better for you. All right, so I'm just going to pull the loops of this bow shorter but that kind of looks pretty and then I'm going to trim off the ends and then now that I've got my bow in place I'm going to pop that on my dimensionals over the end there that looks cute doesn't it the last thing we have on here is some little mushrooms and like I they're, they're pretty small, so I used a mini dimensional behind each one. So one mini, one mini dimensional behind the main part of the mushroom. And I pop them down over here because there's not a lot of color in this corner. One there, take the back off the other. And I pop the other one, you can pop it just over the top or just underneath. There you go, I'm just gonna pop it underneath so they kind of look like they're overlapping. All right, and that's it. That's the card done. Um, I did add an extra, um, and I do have one here. If you wanted to add, this is also from the die set, these little trees, and I added one of those up in the corner behind him, but it, it doesn't actually need it. You can see I put it there, but if you don't want to have that, you don't have to have that at all. So um, I really love how it turned out. Super, super easy card to make. Um, if you're interested in seeing more diorama cards that I've done with the wider sides, I'll link the um, videos for those in the bottom so you can go off and watch those ones, which are really similar. Both of them have a Christmas theme. One is uh, like a little, um, some little houses in the background and lots of glitter. And the other one has, um, the other one is more of a snowy uh, pine tree kind of a scene. So, but they both look very, very cute. And I think this is a good addition to the diorama schedule. So, I hope you enjoyed that with me today. Don't forget I go live here every Friday night and Sunday night. Um, you're welcome to join in and see what I'm making whenever you pop in. Um, we do lots of different techniques and lots of different fun things. So I'd love to have you join me. And don't forget to subscribe. 
All right, have a great week or wherever you are and I will see you all soon. Bye-bye.